So if you watch my last chapter, you'll know we went over how to build a Pyrac 2245 LoRaWAN gateway from this kit available on Adafruit. The next thing we'll need to do, of course, is get the firmware for the gateway configured and talking to the Things Network. This step-by-step -step tutorial offered by the Things Network clearly walks new users like me through the process, which I'll mirror here. The first thing you want to do is click on the download link for the firmware that we'll be uh, imaging to our Raspberry Pi. Clicking on that link will take you to this page where you'll want to download the highlighted file. So here you can see that I've downloaded that firmware to my computer. Once that file is downloaded, you'll need to install the firmware on an SD card readable by your Raspberry Pi. For this, you'll want to click on this link which will take you to this page for downloading the Etcher software. It appears the page does detect your OS, which in my case is for a Mac, and offers you the appropriate download for the software. So I've just launched the uh, Belena Etcher software. I'm gonna select the image that I just downloaded from the web. It's in my downloads directory. I'm gonna go ahead and open it. And then I'm just going to flash it to my uh, to my SD card that's installed on my computer. It'll take about uh, about four minutes on my machine to do the full flash. I'm not going to put you through all that. Bottom line is it will unmount that hardware once it's fully flashed. And having removed that SD card from my computer, I can now insert it into my rack hardware as I demonstrated in the last video. And once your SD card is inserted and your antennas are attached, it's time to power up your gateway. And I like to use these switches for doing the same since otherwise I'll need to manually plug in my power supply into the gateway to power things up. Upon doing so, you'll start to see some flashing lights on the gateway. Since the gateway is not attached to a monitor, I suspect the flashing green light is echoing activity that would otherwise be displayed in a terminal window. You'll want to wait for that activity to stabilize before going on to the next step. The next step is to access the OS for the gateway by having your computer linked to the Raspberry Pi as an access point, as I'll demonstrate next. So here's my desktop, and I'm going to click on the Wi-Fi icon, and I'm going to find the Rack Wireless uh, access point. You're going to use the one with uh, four numbers after it. Don't use the one with the, uh, with the multiple X's. And then you're going to uh, sign in with the default password, which is Rack Wireless. And I'll show you the password so you can see that. And uh, we'll give it a few seconds and eventually I'll get a connection. And there it is. Once you've done all that, you'll want to open up a secure session or SSH session for your rack at the IP address of 192.168.230.1 via Mac or Windows terminal window as demonstrated in the next few seconds. And uh, here I, I am on my desktop. I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal window. I'm going to log in as a uh, super user. I'm going to use my uh, desktop super user password. Now I'm logged in as root. And now I'm going to start that secure session uh, with my uh, Pi at uh, the provided IP that I just mentioned. And uh, go ahead and use the default password for that, which is Raspberry, when you first set this up. Next, we'll need to configure the gateway. We'll do this by issuing the sudo gateway config command and setting up parameters appropriately as demonstrated over the next few seconds. So here I am back in my terminal window. I'm going to go ahead and launch that gateway configuration program. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, set up a new Pi password. I don't want it to be Raspberry, so I'm going to give it something else to work with. And then the next thing is I want to uh, set this up to talk to uh, the Things Network and also specify my wavelength. In the US, it's 902 to 928. Finally, we'll want the gateway to talk to our router either via Wi-Fi or an Ethernet cable. In my case, I've configured the gateway to work over Wi-Fi, which I'll demonstrate over the next few seconds. So I'm still in the configuration program. I'm going to uh, configure my Wi-Fi uh, to basically uh, enable the client mode, disable AP mode. And just click OK on this. 
And the next thing is, since uh, I want my gateway to be able to talk to uh, my router and to the web, I have to uh, first uh, specify what country I'm in. But more importantly, the other thing I'm going to need to do is uh, identify my SSID, which is, my, uh, which is the router that's uh, serving me the web, as well as the password. So that's where this comes in. So this is the uh, name of my network connection. And of course, I'm going to hide my, uh, my password for that. Now I can quit. And I'm going to go ahead and reboot so that all those changes stick. Now that we've done this, the gateway will no longer show up as an access point in our Wi-Fi options. Furthermore, the IP address of the gateway has changed. Identifying its new IP address will require that you log into your router, which can typically be done by typing this address into your browser URL field. On my router, I had a menu option to then click on Attach Devices, which showed I had about 15 devices hooked up to my Wi-Fi via my router hardware. I have these widened out on the screenshot, but I am showing you that the Rack Gateway is now hooked up to my network per the SSID and password provided when I reconfigured my settings. If this doesn't show up, make sure your gateway is within radio reach of your router. If it still doesn't show up, it may be that you provided incorrect information when configuring the gateway. The Things Network has information on how to fix this if this is your case. In addition to confirming the gateway is talking to our router, we also want to make sure to write down its IP address. We'll need this to establish a future secure shell connection, as I'll demonstrate next. Okay, and here my uh, gateway has been rebooted, so I'm going to try to log in again. Uh, this time, I'm going to try to log in uh, using the uh, new IP address, as well as the new password that I just configured. And there you go. Next, we need to connect our gateway to the Things Network so that it's visible by our remote applications for receiving data. So to get the uh, unique ID for my gateway, you just type in sudo gateway version, and it'll give you a 16-digit number, which you'll need for the Things Network website. And for the purposes of this demonstration, let's just assume that this was the number that was reported back. So the next step is to log into the Things Network, and if you don't have an account, you will need to create one to be able to register your gateway. Go ahead and click on Console, and then uh, you'll see options for uh, creating applications and gateways. If you click on Gateways, you shouldn't have anything here. I've got uh, my gateway registered, the one that I'm currently experimenting with. You can see that it's connected here. The data's been going in and out uh, based on some experiments I've been doing. Uh, but I'm going to walk you through how to set this up for your own purposes. So when you click on that large gateway icon, you should see an option here to register a gateway. And this is where we're going to put that 16-digit uh, number that I mentioned earlier, the one that's, uh, that's assumed for the gateway that we, that we created. Next, go ahead and give your gateway a title that will appear in the table of contents for your uh, gateway icon. Select the frequency depending on where you live. For me, it's 915 megahertz since I'm in the US. And then a, a Things Network router that works for your location. In my case, it'll be US West since I'm in uh, the United States. Go ahead and drop a pin somewhere on the map uh, to approximate the location of your gateway. You can zoom in and turn on the satellite uh, imagery backdrop to help you better approximate the location of your gateway. Let's assume my gateway is associated with that little house on the left, the white one. I can go ahead and put a new pin right there. And then if I scroll down a little bit further, I can uh, specify whether it's an indoor or an outdoor gateway. These are the minimum requirements for registering your gateway. And upon doing so, you should see your status uh, with a little green marker indicating that your gateway is connected to the Things Network. With the uh, minimum requirements now having been uh, added, uh, we can uh, create some additional metadata for the gateway. We can specify the uh, brand of the gateway, um, the model, which in my case is the RAC 2245. And in, in this case, I don't really know who made the antenna for this kit, so I'm just going to say it's a generic 2 dB antenna. We can update it and go back to overview. 
and see what else we can populate here. Um, with respect to the, uh, the location, we can insert an altitude, which for this location would be about 750 meters above sea level. And what else? And then we can also um, uh, identify whether uh, we want to make the, uh, uh, the gateway public, or if we're still in development, we may want to keep it private. But by making the location public, uh, it will be uh, visible on the Things Network on their main web page as a registered gateway. And again, uh, this is a fictitious gateway that we just created, uh, but if this were a real gateway that were powered on, we'd see information about it being pinged, uh, received and transmitted messages. And if we've made the uh, uh, status of the gateway public, as I've done with the one that I'm playing with, uh, we'd be able to go to the Things Network, their main page, um, check their map for registered gateways, zoom into our area of interest, and after about four hours, uh, we should be able to see our gateway registered as mine is here. You can see we don't have a lot of public uh, gateways in and around Tucson. Uh, one thing you might want to be careful with in creating these fictitious gateways is they're not easy to delete. Uh, so I've gone ahead and I've tried to uh, delete uh, the ones that I've created. Uh, you're supposed to basically uh, type in the uh, ID of the gateway, but I don't get an option to actually follow through with the deletion of the gateway. So I've tried this multiple times. I think it might be a browser issue. I'm not sure, but uh, for the time being, I have these two fictitious gateways associated with my profile that I haven't figured out how to delete yet. Next time I'll demonstrate creating an application on the Things Network so that our LoRa-enabled microcontrollers can send data to the Internet of Things from remote locations. And of course I'll share details about installing this gateway at ZeroCraft, which is our local Tucson, Arizona hackerspace. Again, I want to thank uh, Jeremy Brittle and David Lesser for giving me the opportunity to uh, contribute to this project. That invitation really is what prompted me to learn about Laura and document details so that I might share with all of you. Thanks for watching and subscribe for updates.